trust God. We trust God. So, Lord Jesus, thank you. We thank you for shalom, peace. That we don't have to panic, be afraid. I pray, Lord, that there would be such an anointed peace on us that when we're at work, wherever we are at, people feel the mantle of peace around us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would create such an atmosphere of dynamic health across this body. Lord, I declare that every person here, part of this body, that their immune system would operate according to how you designed it to operate, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's get into the word. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, guys. Praise God. Sarah, you cheesy. Praise the Lord. James chapter 2, favorites. Talking about partiality um, tonight. And this is kind of, um, it's kind of like an embarrassing topic that James has to tell Christians not to show favoritism to different groups of people. Like, because we would all say, no, I, I don't show I don't show favoritism, you know, no, I don't have any kind of partiality um, in me, but let's not, dis dis let's not disconnect ourselves from the convicting arm of the Holy Spirit, okay? Let's put ourselves right in the zone and never, we, sh we should know that we should never, never say, no, no, that's not me, you know what I'm saying? We should always be in that place because even when Jesus had the 12 disciples, when he said, one of you will betray me, all the disciples were like, is it me? Because we all have a, is it me in us? And uh, we should always put ourselves. And I always say that if we allow ourselves to be convicted, then we don't have to uh, repent of something. We could just say, I'm here ready. I'm ready to go. God, Holy Spirit. And then we don't have to be bothered by being entrapped, entrapped in sin. So let's look at James chapter 2, verse 1 through 13. This is, uh, praise the Lord. It says, my brothers... As believers, my brothers and sisters, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show partiality. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothing and, a, and in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here is a good seat for you, but to the poor man you say, you sit over there, sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judge with judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom? He promised those who love him, but you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are you not the ones who are dragging you into the courts? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble of him to, to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. For he... For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. And if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have broken the whole law. You become a lawbreaker. Verse 12, speak and act as those who are, who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. One version says, to speak and act by one who's going to be judged by the law of liberty. And that's an interesting phrase right there. We're going to really talk about that one tonight. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy always wins over, over judgment. I was taking a look at uh, studying for tonight uh, partiality, which is really, I was just saying, it's, it's an embarrassing topic. But I was taken back a little bit as I was uh, studying for this passage that we make assessments and we make judgments based on what we see right on the spot and we can't deny it we make and it's the judgment is so quick that if we're not led by the spirit the judgment can turn into an action see the partiality is an internal judgment the outside action is a prejudice it's a it's a racist thought it's a it, and this whole and our country is really faced with the 
the, the sin of prejudice because of the mindset, the internal judgment structure of partiality. It's so, we got to be so careful. And what, the, what James was dealing with was he was saying, listen, in the, in the chapter prior, he says, you consider yourself religious. And he used the phrase religious in a very sarcastic sense. Like you consider yourself religious, and, and, but yet you can't control your tongue. You consider yourself religious, control your tongue, take care of the widow, take care of the orphan. And then he says, don't show partiality. So he says, your relationship, a sign of your relationship with Christ is based on how do you treat other people. This is so practical. How you treat other people is a symbol of your spirituality. And we could say, most of us can probably, ah, no, no, that's not me. I don't need this. I don't show partiality. Well, tonight, if we allow the Holy Spirit to shed light in our hearts, and if we are honest with us, with, with ourselves, it's unmistakable that what is in the human heart eventually leaks out. So I looked up the word partiality. The definition says this. Unfair bias in favor of one thing or person compared with another, showing favoritism. So I love it because our first impression team, I know Grace is part of the first impression team. There's, there's several of you, Beth, that are involved. We say you, you are excited to see everyone the same. And even if someone's been coming here for 30 years, you go, it's so good to see. You treat them like they're a first-time visitor. And if they're a first-time visitor, you treat them like they're special. You treat everyone the same. But the whole definition of partiality is we, we, we have this unfair bias. Before we even get to know the person, we're already making judgments based on what we see. Based, immediately based on what, and none of us can say, no, I don't do that. We all do it. Based on what a, a kind of car the person's driving, based on what they're wearing, we all do it. Now, there's four different, we're going to break this up in four different ways. The, the first part is the partiality is we use the externals. We base everything by what we see. That's it. This is why I'm so grateful the, the, with, with Samuel and the Lord. The Lord says, you look on the outside, I look at the heart. Aren't you glad? That, oh, God, thank you, you look at the heart. And Jesus had trouble with the Pharisees because the Pharisees were focused on the outside. And Jesus said, listen, you can wash the outside of the cup, but the inside of the cup is filthy. You ever take a cup out of the cupboard and you're like, who didn't? Wow, well, just I kind of focus on what you could see. If you focus on what you're going to see, your character will never be built. Okay? So we go from, we use the externals, and what the externals do, what we see reveals a prompt judgment. We make an immediate judgment call based on a split second on what we see in that person. And, and if it's for the first time that you're watching or seeing that person, it's so unfair because within a split second, you've made a judgment based on what that person is dressed, based on what that person is, is speaking, based on what that person is wearing, based on what that person is driving. And as a result, a reve it reveals a prompt judgment, and then thirdly, it reveals a behavior. And that behavior is you're favoring some and not others. And then lastly, it reveals a motive, and that motive is a lack of mercy. So now I want you to think of it this way. Partiality is really important because we're conduits of covenant. Jesus is not on the earth right now. He was. He says, I got to go. Now it's your turn. So when people feel love, it's because we're loving them through Christ. So God doesn't come down and give everybody a hug or say, I love you. He uses us. We're conduits of covenant. So when people feel loved, it's because of you. When people feel mercy, it's because of you. When people feel grace, it's because of you. When people feel embrace and compassion, it's because of God's love in you. We, I am a conduit of his uh, covenant. So when I show favoritism, somebody's missing out. Jesus, who did he hang out with? He hung out with people that most people would choose to bypass. And he rebuked the Pharisees because the Pharisees were like, why are you eating with them? And Jesus was like, because they're sinners and I love them. And this is interesting. And as I was working on this sermon, revealing so much about our, our nature, this is interesting for me because I'd like to think I don't know about you, but I I like to think about what I'm going to wear before I come to church. People are like, 
help me out, bro. Huh? Do you guys, do you guys just kind of like get dressed in the, well, some of you look like you do, but do you guys kind of get dressed in the dark with your eyes closed, spin around and just walk out the house? No. Why? Because you want to look, it's okay, come on. Now, some of you spend a lot of money on your clothes. I tell you what, I have no shame in the game. Sometimes my wife will get me a jacket from, from Sabres. Some, some, yeah, come on now. Sometimes I'm like, you take that thing back and I want my $2.50 back. I don't care if it's 99% off. Take that thing back. Every once in a while, she'll bring me a jacket. I'm like, this is nice. I'll have to remove all the tissues from the pockets and have it dry clean 59 times, but hey. But we focus on externals and, and everything we do, we want to look and, and, and I like wearing nice, I have, I have more shoes than my wife. I like, you notice that, I like shoes, they're for my feet, I just, because I want to be comfortable. Because we focus on externals. My watch is a $20 watch from Target, but doesn't look like an expensive. It, it was just like one of those things, we were going to the Netherlands, I said, I need a watch, I went to Target, I paid 20 bucks for it, I'm like, it's good, and it's still working. And, 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 and it's just we focus on the outside. But Jesus was saying, I wish you could focus more on the inside. You know, take that sponge and clean inside the cup. In our house, we have a yellow sponge for dishes, a blue sponge for the counter, and, and, a, and a green sponge for the other counter. Because everything has to, I know, I know. Just, but clean <laughs> the inside of the cup. The outside is a reputation. The inside is a character. If we could focus more on our character than our reputation, we'd be in good shape. You know what? I'm not as concerned as what people are saying about me as I am what Christ says about, what Christ says about me. That's, this is really important. And it appears that all of our, or many, or ma- majority of our decisions are based on what we see. We went to India. I, t- I shared a story s- several weeks ago about um, when we went to India, there was a driver that we had. Um, and India, they still practice the caste system. There's four different castes. They've been practicing it for hundreds of years. And so, and so when I would ask, and I was making jokes with him, we, we, had, our, we had our interpreter, and, and I was like, I wanted to know his name, and the guy kept saying something, and, and the guy didn't want to in, in, uh, um, interpret the name because he felt like I shouldn't be talking to the driver. Nobody should be talking to the driver. So I said, I want to know his name. So the guy interpreter tells me his name is Driver. So I said, no, really, what's his name? We don't know his name. His name is Driver. But does he know his name? He says he does not know his name, which is why we call him Driver. So I said, we're going to give him a name. We're going to call him Jimmy. <laughs> My wife and I, we agreed on it. We're like, either we took Jimmy or Johnny. And so we said, Jimmy, anywhere we ate, I said, Jimmy is going to come with us to eat. And the people, that, the, the Indian pastors that were there with us had a di- difficult time with that. And I said, if you want me to treat, we're going to take Jimmy. And it was one of those places that we took like 30, out, 30 people to eat, and it was like $18. That was like my treat. <laughs> and I said, Jimmy is coming to eat with us, and he's going to sit at the head of the table. At the head of the table. Now, Jimmy wasn't used to uh, being treated like that. You see, there are, there are a lot of people in the world that are not used to being loved, used to being embraced, used to uh, feeling the grace of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because they've never stepped into a church like us that will treat people just like Jesus would treat them. And so really, this message is about loving God and loving everybody and treating every single person the same. Now, James makes the argument that there's no distinction in heaven between uh, races or different, or, or different groups of people. And thereby, there should be no distinctions on earth. We should view people through the le- mercy lens of, of Jesus. And that means we look at their souls and not their status. What kind of car? What kind of car? Tonight, I, I'm driving around my, in my wife's 14-year-old minivan. But when I drive my Honda Sport with the nice rims, I feel different. You guys are looking at me like, 
It just, you just feel different when you rent a car and you go to Florida and you rent a car and he says, would you, got, would you like to be upgraded? I'm like, why? Oh, to a BMW. I'm like, yeah. It feels different. My wife goes down there on a woman's conference and she rents the, a convertible uh, red uh, uh, Chevy, whatever, whatever she takes. It. She says it felt good. Why? Because we always focus on the externals. We focus on, it, it feels good when you get a nice new pair of sneakers or when you get, when you, ladies, when you get your nails done, it affects your whole mindset. And all you did was put a little paint on those tips of your fingers and spend $80. We're going to have an altar call for all the ladies right now. Come over here, Charlene. No. <laughs> your nails did look good. I noticed them. Worshiping up there. Like, yeah. So... <laughs> We look at their souls and not their status. Think about Jesus. Jesus chose to hang around with people that nobody else wanted. And we always say, years ago, Pastor Mando used to say, send us nobody else wants. Send us people that nobody. Aren't you glad that nobody? See, when we use the word, the, the, the whole aspect of partiality is a prerequisite for prejudice. And prejudice is prejudgment. I don't even know you, but I'm going to judge you based on what I see about you. Based on what I think the kind of person that, I, I don't know what the contents of your heart is, but I'm going to judge you by the externals. Based on if you're rich or based on if you are poor. Now, James is speaking of partiality with rich and poor. In verse 2 and 3, he says, If a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your church, and a poor man in shabby clothes comes in, he says, Your judgment will cause you to behave in a certain way that will reveal a motive that does not characterize Christ. So based on what you see, be careful... Based on what you see, the preconceived notion, the prejudgment, the partiality will cause you to behave in a certain way, and immediately it'll, re it'll release a motive that everyone can see. So again, let's look at this list again. We use externals. The external judgment reveals a prompt judgment that you make. It reveals a behavior, and it reveals a motive that is not Christ-like. Now, so James uses partiality to, to talk about rich and poor. Paul, the apostle Paul, uses partiality in Romans chapter 2, verse 11. He says, there is no partiality with God. Now, in James' context, he's talking about rich, poor. In Paul's context, he's talking about race. He's talking about people groups. He's talking about ethnicity. He's talking about, and the issue here was with the Greeks and the Jews, and they were really fighting against each other. And he says that both groups are liable because of their sin, the sin of prejudice, the sin of racism. And our world, and it doesn't, I don't like when I talk to certain groups of people and says, no, 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 there's no racism in our world. There is. Our world is still filled with racism. I can't control out there, but I can't control in here. And so can you. So by the power of Christ in us, that we, that a symbol of the fruit of the Spirit is how you treat somebody else that is different than you. How you treat someone. And I tell you what, talking about rich and poor, we go to Guatemala and those people have nothing and they are happy. And we are so stressed out and beat up with all our technology and everything like that. They have nothing. And they are happy. They're filled. And he even said it. He even said it. The rich are the going to be, the, the poor are going to be the ones that are going to in, inherit the kingdom. Now, I don't want to paint a bad picture about rich people. I love rich people, especially when they tithe here. I love rich people. I love rich people. I love rich people. I love rich people. <laughs> I love them. I love them. I love them. So the whole aspect with rich people and poor people, we shouldn't even in our minds create a system of separation and treat someone who is rich more favorably or spend time with them just because they have what somebody else doesn't have. And so may our church be filled with men and women that are, that, that are filled with the mercy and see people's souls rather than their status. 
And this is why we do, when we do outreach in downtown Providence, when we connect with downtown Providence, I had, a, I had an appointment at a coffee shop. It used to be Starbucks. It's something else now. Point Dexter. I, every time I go to that area, I give myself time because there's always somebody there that needs to talk. And more than likely, it's going to be somebody that needs to talk that the Pharisees would never have time to talk to. You make time to talk to people that need to be on the receiving end of the mercy of Christ, the love of Christ, the hope of Christ. And so there, the, James does a really good job at listing, and, and I like how he writes, five reasons why we shouldn't show partiality. This is it right here. All right? And we don't have time to deal with all, every single one of them, but there's going to be two that we're really going to highlight. So first thing, in James chapter 2, verse 1, partiality contradicts faith. He says, my brothers and sisters, believers in our gl glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show partiality. If you are a believer in Christ, you should not have favorites. Now, I always say God has his favorites, and that's every single one of you. Number two, partiality reveals a judging heart. In verses 2 through 5, he says, you sit, you tell the rich guy, you sit here. You tell the poor person, sit at my feet. How you treat people tells me a lot about your faith. How you, I tell you, how you speak to your coworkers, yikes, tells me a lot about your faith. Now, hopefully they know that you're a Christian, right? Hopefully they know you're a follower of Jesus Christ. If I were to go to your workplace tomorrow morning, would they even know that there's something different about you? When we passed, when I was pastoring in Ohio, I had to get work done on my vehicle, so I, I dropped my vehicle off at a, a mechanic shop that a guy who attends my church works as a mechanic there. So I go to the front desk, and I'm like, hey, yeah, my name is Tony Palo. Um, do you know Mike? Is he here? Oh, yeah, Mike's in the back. How do you know him? I'm his pastor. He goes, What? I'm like, yeah, I'm his, um, okay, never mind. I said, I'm his pastor. He says, he goes to your church? Uh, hopefully he don't act like, like how he acts here in your church. The true, he says, the way he treats the pe the way he treats people and the way he speaks to people. So true spirituality. So James is painting this picture. He says, You're, you want to be religious? Stop talking the way you're talking. Treat orphans and, orphans and widows with respect. And, and also treat people without favoritism. Okay? Number three, partiality dishonors those created in God's image. This is it. And this is what he says in verse five. He says, has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? I know, I know rich people that have a very poor attitude. And I know poor people that have a very rich attitude. Can we have both poor attitude, a rich attitude, and also be blessed by God? God needs more rich people. Doesn't he need? God, don't you ever say, Lord, you know, just kind of dig, and give me, let me be a steward for a couple of years to see how I do. Right? Don't you ever pray that prayer? Just give me a chance. One chance is all I need. God, this is how things get done. This is how, we're, we're, this is how the kingdom advances. God chooses to use money to advance the kingdom. The problem here is that the rich people here were disconnected from, from God, and it was, the, it was Christians going, hey, these people are rich. Let's treat them differently than those who are poor. And these conflicts, these, these conflicts that were happening aren't external conflicts. They were more internal conflicts. And we destroy now the work of God, the image of God in people when we treat them poorly. Like everybody that we treat poorly, that person is made in the image of God. And God's saying, why are you doing that to my kid, man? He's my kid just like you're my kid. Four, partiality causes you to sin against the law that brings freedom. Now, one version, the key, the, this is the NIV the King James Version says, the King James Version says, against the law of liberty. This is interesting. Partiality calls you to be a sinner against the law of liberty. This is what verse 12 says. Speak and act 
as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Let's, let's clear this up. Or, or one version, if you look at your Bibles in verse 12, it says, Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that brings liberty. And we're going we're gonna to look at that, right? We're going to look at that phrase right there. We're going to spend time on this one here. Paul says it this way in Galatians 5. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So this is the law of the liberty. We've been set free from our sins. Yes? That is, we are forgiven and freed from the condemnation and dominion of sin. Now we are to live in that freedom. And what is that freedom? That freedom now is to treat every single person the way Christ treated us. Let's just, let's just take this for a moment now. And this was the, the dream of, of Martin Luther King, that we're all created in God's image. And it, since we're all created in God's image, and the plane and the field is the same level at the cross, let's treat each other with the law of liberty that brings grace. We've been forgiven. We're not condemned by God. Why do we condemn others? And sometimes I think, man... We don't do a good job showing. Sometimes I see people not, not giving mercy to others. I'm like, you need to be a lot more kinder. Like, I'll, I'll never forgive my sister. Like, Christ forgave you. Who do you think you are to, to not release what you've been receiving? And as a conduit of covenant, God uses us. You're the house of the Holy Spirit. You're a representation of covenant. And so the law of liberty, Paul says it in verse 13 of Galatians 5, you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Use that freedom to serve one another. Use that freedom to love one another. And, and James in verse 8 says, says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the love is the natural and necessary fruit of being justified by faith. So if you show partiality, if you, are, if you have racism in your heart, if you are prejudiced, which I, sometimes I get angry when I look at the history of the KKK and the early history of the slaves being brought here to America, all in the name of Christianity, it drives me crazy. I mean, how, how, that's such a fundamental conflict to the scriptures and so the, the way you treat people, and if you're going to show partiality and be racist and, and have prejudice in your heart, then you have no evidence of faith in Christ. That's what James says. There's no evidence if that's how you're going to treat people. There's no evidence. So the law of liberty, what is that? Liberty, we've been given freedom. We've been given liberty. Liberty governs us by love. We love God, and we treat people with the evidence that we love God. So when you treat people the way you do, people should immediately sense there's something different about this person. I've been treated with kindness before, but your kindness is different. Why? Because it's kindness housed in the house of the Holy Spirit. This is important now. When people come to this church and say, I feel so compassionate, I feel so loved, it's because God is loving them through you. I feel so, I feel there's so much mercy. I feel on Sunday at the 11 o'clock service, this past Sunday, the presence of God was here. Why? Because you were here. If there was nobody here, God would be like, well, this is not going to be any fun. There's nobody here. So what am I going to do here? Let me, go some, let me go somewhere where people will appreciate me. So we show love. We show love to God. We show that we belong to God. What did Jesus say? The world will know that you belong to me by the way you love. He didn't say, listen, the world's going to know you belong to me by how you perform miracles. Keep doing those miracles. Good job. Let me tell you, learn how to raise a dead body and people will know. He said, no, people will know how you love. How you, you have to, you don't have to like me. You have to love me. <laughs> Do you know somebody you, you love? You have to love, but you don't. Oh, never mind. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so what is, what is the law here? The law here, this is a, not a light thing now. What is, what is the law? The law is liberty. The law 
governs us and says to us, you have to show love. We've been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are owned by heaven. And what is the law under that? The law under that says love. May you release an organic love that exudes the power of forgiveness. And that is the liberty. And the law requires you to love everyone. And then he says, if you love everyone, you will be judged under that same law. And this brings us to the fifth one. Let's review it now. Partiality contradicts faith. Partiality reveals a judging heart. Partiality dishonors those who are created in God's image. Partiality causes you to sin against the law that brings freedom. And then lastly, partiality is not mercy. There's so mercy kindness, love, the fruit. If we, imagine if just every single person who calls himself a Christian says, I'm going to make a concerted effort with God's help to live in the fruit of the Spirit. To be just, you ever tell somebody, man, you're really mean. <laughs> Why are you so mean? I'm not mean. It's like, just, just mercy. And the people, we have the first impression team, with, which involves our guest services, first impression and ushers and the people who open the door. And they're like, what, you know, what, is, what do I have to do? I just, you have to be kind and smile a lot. That's it. Just be kind, be welcoming, just be, uh, just, just be merc- filled with mercy. And judge and James 2.13 says this, judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Yikes. Mercy, I like this. Mercy triumphs. What he says, mercy always wins over judgment. Jesus, God could have come full right at you with judgment, but he came right at Jesus with judgment. Jesus took on all the punishment of the world and now enabling God to show you mercy. This is the cross. So the, pa- the pain of the cross wasn't so much the physical agony as much as it was with the spiritual agony because the Bible says he took the sins of the world on his shoulders. God said, yep, let's take, take all the sins of the people, Restoration Church. Here you go. There's a lot of them. Now he shows us mercy. That's what it means to be justified. He looks at you just as if you'd never sinned. And here it says, mercy always. We're always looking for a way to punish people that get, he got to me, she got to me, now I got to get him back. I'm going to figure out a way. And maybe you're not looking to get actual revenge, but maybe you think bad thoughts. Maybe you hope for bad things to go their way. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't? <laughs> it's like, man, that person's such an evil sinner, man. I, I hope they just something bad happens to them. And mercy always wins. What is Matthew 7? Matthew 7, 2 says it this way. With the same measure that you use of judgment, it will be used against you. And that's actually, you know, that's actually, I think, of a, a, a pride. It, is that it distances you from mercy. Pride. It got the enemy, it got Lucifer kicked out of heaven, right? Pride. Get out. It got Adam and Eve kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Get out. I, I, I can't show you. And the reason why God kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden, he says, you got to go because I'm going to kill you. So you got to leave until I come up with a plan to invite you back under the guise of mercy and grace. So as a result now, we can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain. Aren't you glad you're a believer of Jesus Christ? And now all James is saying, when people come into your presence, embrace them the way I've embraced you. I didn't look at you and make, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't show partiality. I looked at you and I actually received you before you were even born. Brooklyn Tabernacle sings a song, before, before you were even born, you were on his mind. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. And none of us were born, none of us were around when he died on the cross, but he accepted you and before he knew you. But Jesus highlighted the poor. I mean, if anything, Jesus, if he was going to focus on anybody, he focused on the poor. He focused on the rejected. He focused on the sinner, the oppressed, the depressed. And Jesus associated himself with people that would be bypassed. And it was the religious people, mind you, that said, ugh, 
get back. Mercy wins over judgment every time. That makes us a vessel, that makes us a conduit, that makes us a temple of covenant, of his love. When people feel anything that reflects God's goodness, it's because they're in your presence. Love, mercy, kindness, grace, generosity, kind words. God uses you based on the law of liberty to extend to others what you yourself have received. So after you're in the presence of God, you're like, wow, that was powerful. Great. What are you going to do with that? God, wow, God changed my life. Okay, wonderful. What does that mean for the person that you work, that annoying person that you work with, <laughs> that works with you every day right next door? To become the living reflection, representation of covenant. You and I are co conduit of covenant. So as we close here, as we close here tonight, let's ask the Lord. It's like, God, I, you use the word posture. Lord, I want to make sure that my posture in this arena of my life, let's not do, do any music for me. Let's make sure that every aspect of my life, when I see people, I look at people, Father, with a broken heart, because that's how you look at people, with a broken heart, that we would have in in, in the DNA of our heart, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of an evangelist that says, I want to reach out to that, to that person. Every single day, tomorrow morning, you're going to come in contact with people, and, and you, maybe you work in a place where it's, so, it's easier to dismiss people than engage them. Tomorrow, engage them. Tomorrow, take the time to engage them. And connect with people that are completely, don't, don't always hang around with people that are the same. Hang around with people that are different than you. Get to know their name. Get to know their story. And then become a conduit of covenant. This is real and it's true because you're believing it. And when people come in contact with you, Paul says, you're, in, you're a living epistle, read and seen by all people. So people may not have a Bible, but they see you. They don't see God, but they see you. And what they believe about God is what they read and see in you. So tomorrow, I challenge you that every person you come in contact with, and, and guard your own thoughts, judge your own thoughts and your own motives, and say, God, that's not of you. I repent of that thought. Forgive me of that process, Lord. It's not of you. I want to grow in the spirit of God and embrace all people. And we continue to pray the prayer, Lord, send people to this church that nobody else wants. We continue to pray that prayer, that we would have people from Main Street sitting next to people from Wall Street, that we would have people from the homeless shelter connecting with the person who's a millionaire. And you know what? We're all the same. We're all the same in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for mercy. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. The Lord of liberty, you set us free. And the law is we set others free. The law of liberty is you loved us. And the law is we love others. The law of liberty, God, is you've shown us mercy. I pray, Father, that we would use every moment of our working day and waking day, God, to show and extend grace and mercy to others, Father. We love everyone. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in His sight, Father. Thank you, Lord. I pray, oh God, that, that we would have a deeper reflection in this church of the nations, God. Every color, every, every nation, Lord, let this church reflect the world. And, Lord, when it comes to missions, Lord, that we would have flags from all over the country, all over the world, oh, Father. Lord, we check. We check our own hearts. Paul says if we judge ourselves, we wouldn't be judged. God, let us judge ourselves with mercy and grace and have a contrite heart. And, Lord, I pray that this would be the most welcoming, most receptive church in the state of Rhode Island, Father. Because of the mercy and love of Christ, Father, I pray you take several moments, Holy Spirit, just to really check our hearts and convict us.
And we would walk back attitudes, bad attitudes. We would walk back bad thoughts and bad judgments, Father. That our motives would be pure and the actions, oh God, would be Christ-like. And that we would be impartial to everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching our hearts, oh God. Yeah. Come on. So homework assignment till next Thursday is connect with somebody, okay? Connect with somebody that is not like you and begin a conversation at your job, at your workplace, in the church. Let it happen. Don't be awkward. You guys are smart. You guys are relational people. Um, let it happen naturally. Connect with someone that is not your culture, not your background, not your swagger, not your liking, not your area, not your region. Connect with somebody completely different than you. Start a conversation. Because that's what Jesus would do. I want you to do that in Jesus' name. Love you. I appreciate you. Your future is bright.